I'm Paul Higgins, an ex-corporate executive turned business owner who for five years struggled to grow a cloud consulting business whilst battling a chronic disease. With the help of mentors and experts, I got the business model right, built a sales and marketing engine and developed a high performing team that ended in a successful exit. I received a kidney transplant from a mate and now on my second life, I dedicate my time to helping other cloud consultants scale quickly with less effort to enjoy life. Detecting an accent, I'm an Aussie working globally from Melbourne, Australia. I interview successful cloud consultants sharing their scaling stories to give you inspiration and practical tips. I have dedicated experts four cloud consultants on the show to save you time and money by working with the right people. If you want to scale quickly with less effort to enjoy life, you're in the right place. Let's get started. Hi, I'm Paul Higgins and welcome to the Cloud Consultants show episode number 496. Today's topic is some secrets in scaling a NetSuite practice to over seven figures in four years. You're going to learn one around self-generation of leads and including that, how to work with strategic partners. The second is why he has a dedicated marketing person. More importantly, what do they do to help drive the business? And the third thing is a knowledge base, right? He's got a fantastic knowledge base, which supplements the NetSuite training. And then he's got that geared up or when AI can tap into it. So he talks about that on the interview. And if you're a first time listener, welcome. And if you love what you hear, please subscribe. Also let others know. And if you're a regular, thanks for listening. But please let me know. Uh, email me at paul at paulhigginsmentoring.com and also suggest either someone you would like me to interview or some topics and I'll definitely cover those. And there'll be a summary of the links mentioned and everything you need to know at Paul Higgins mentoring.com forward slash podcast and it's episode 496 and before we go into our interview with Robert I'd like to talk about our sponsors the first is the Cloud Consultants Collective which I mentioned in the podcast but it is the world's only revenue focused collective for Cloud Consultants in short it's better than chat GDP Google YouTube you name it for getting peers that answer your questions quick smart right so it's only got your colleagues and peers in it and it's a um, multi-platform. You can find out more and try it yourself for free at the cloudconsultantscollective.com. And the other is uh, Workflow Academy. So if your high-skilled team are struggling with workload and you need someone to come in under them as a junior and support them, uh, Workflow Academy can help you. They've got some fantastic resources that are predominantly us focused. So if you're in the US, it's certainly something you should check out. Just go to paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash WFA. So today's guest, Robert is the CEO and founder of OneCloud X. It's award-winning business recognized as a finalist in the prestigious 2020 CRN Fast 50 growing IT companies in Australia as per the topic. Uh, Robert is a, a track record of success in including large-scale ERP implementations across Europe and APAC. And that was when he was on the client side. He also did a stint in consulting uh, with one of the top four consulting companies. And uh, now he's set up his own business. So he brings all of that experience into the partner side. He's a very forward thinker. And he really looks at a way to modernize how organizations leverage the power of cloud and take advantage of some of the best and breed tools, which we talk about in particular, NetSuite, uh, Salesforce, and Elmo. So what I'll do now is hand you over to Robert Jusek from OneCloudX. Great to have you here, Robert. Thank you, Paul. Pleasure to be here. Yeah, well, it's always good to have a fellow Australian. And that's fantastic to have you uh, on the show, but also um, we don't have a lot of NetSuite partners on. So uh, I was very excited when you said yes to coming on the show. So we're looking forward to unpacking more about your business as we go. But why don't we kick off with who your ideal clients are and what problems you love to solve for them? Yeah. So the ideal client is an organization that has a lot of complexity in their business processes, different technologies, um, not talking to one another. And, and the need to eliminate manual handling out of the process, especially within the finance team where there's a disconnect of systems and nothing really synchronizing back into the, the financials. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's some of the ideal clients that we work with is, is those organizations that have multiple systems, multiple tech stacks, wanting to upgrade into the cloud using a one platform solution like NetSuite. 
right? In any particular industries? Yeah, so so they vary quite a lot. Typical manufacturing, distribution, professional service organizations, also software organizations. So it does vary. And also, you know, we do tend to focus a lot more on the advanced manufacturing components um, of, of organizations where shop floor management, you know, process manufacturing, which is not what many people would think NetSuite would be able to handle. So, so that's where we also tend to like to play. Yeah, great. And size? Size-wise, we don't play at the lower end of town. And when I mean lower end of town, I'm talking like 10 users or less or 10 employees or less. Really, it's the in the SMB space, it's really the mid-market side of things, which is 50 employees all the way up to, you know, a few hundred. So, you know, revenue size, 50 plus million to, you know, two, three hundred million dollar organizations locally and internationally. Yeah, great, great. And in international, well, what sort of markets do you cover? So in international, most organizations are headquartered in Australia. So it's if they have, um, you know, the ASX listed with operations in the US or the UK, it's uh, predominantly those sort of organizations that need that level of visibility across the different subsidiaries, um, different reporting requirements, tax and, and the like. So those sort of organizations internationally. Great. And you talked about sort of the complexities we've got maybe legacy systems, et cetera. We sort of, you know, as our fellow uh, cloud consultants, you're listening, you sort of, you know, you know where I'm going with this question, but you know, the problems, what are some of the, especially, you know, we're in the middle of uh, high, high inflation, high interest rates, you know, what are some of the key problems people are coming to you to solve at the moment? We're getting a lot of opportunities in the planning and budgeting space mm -hmm. yeah. because, ERPs are not really renowned for, for, for budgeting, right? You load a budget once it's finalized into the system and then you're kind of reporting against your actuals and, uh, you know, against the budgets that you've signed off. So it's more the planning element around budgeting and forecasting from both a financial statement, P&L, balance sheet perspective, whether you're managing inventory and trying to work out what your margins need to be to, to sell that inventory to generate that income, um, to if your services, what your workforce management needs to look like from that perspective. But it's more got to do with cash flow, right? And the cash flow maintenance and management of the organization, not backward looking cash flow, because you know it's more forward looking cash flow. Because backward looking cash flow, you can do that out of the ERP, any ERP, because yes. you've got your accounts payable, receivables all in there. It's more the forward looking components as to, okay, if we're projecting these sales, if we're projecting these costs, what does that do to the overall cash flow? And what do I need to do in terms of factoring the increase in interest rates if we have to go get loans to substantiate procurements and, and the like. Yeah, yeah, excellent. Excellent. And uh, as far as, you know, I, I said in the intro and I've I said it briefly that you've, you know, had some really good success over the last four years. You've grown well and kept a small team. Uh, I don't, you know, want you to unveil all of your secrets, but what do you think is some of the, the reasons for uh, such uh, great success over the four years? It helps that I came from an ERP background, 20 odd years in, in it, you know, lived in many countries across Europe, implementing different technology stacks in the paper and, you know, pulp sort of uh, merchanting businesses. Um, so, so yeah, from that experience, I, I kind of dabbled from the business side of it, of implementing those technologies and what's worked yes. uh, versus what hasn't worked. Uh, compared to uh, working actually at the vendor side and and what the vendor you know and how they sell and how they manage and how they you know implement solutions from their perspective. So so I, I thought it was uh, you know pr you know the opportunity for me to go out four odd years ago with the partner of mine Vcash to to start one Cladex and get over the fear of beginning this business. Yeah yeah and and so so to my knowledge definitely helps right and by the sounds of you can understand the complexity of the business problems and you take a, a you know a business first approach versus a technology first approach and i know on your linkedin about page we'll have the links in the show notes to to robert's linkedin is you talk about an unbiased advice so you know how does that play out when you first get introduced especially if it's a partner introduction mm. how do you give unbiased advice so for, for me it's understanding what the current pain points are in the organization when it comes to business process, um, you know, whether it's front office or back office pain points that pertain to, you know, systems and technologies, how you're executing those, 
for me, is trying to understand why, where you're at today and how you're using technology to support the organization and the people to deliver the processes to, to your clients in the, in the most cost-effective and, uh, and optimal way. So that's the first thing is understanding that. And then it's a matter of going and trying to align the best tech stack, um, or even sometimes I don't even recommend the solutions we even do, right? Because it may not be fit for purpose for the sector that you're in, right? So at the end of the day, it's, it's just making sure that you're resolving the pain points with the relevant solutions based on the requirements of the organization. Yeah. And each stakeholder has got a different perspective on the problem, right? So it's never, you know, here it is, everyone agrees, let's now go and build. What are some ways that you have been able to, you know, identify the right problems at the right time? You're right. Every, every department will have their own set of pain points. You know, you've got the sales team who have got theirs and you've got the finance team and the operations team and the planning team, and they've all got their pain points. So it's, it's a matter of consolidating those and bringing them together to understand from a holistic perspective what each and every dollar amount um, that an organization could be leaking in relation to lost sales or um, potential efforts that need to be delivered in order to execute a process at a time at perspective, which equals dollars of people delivering on the process. So it's understanding those elements in order to therefore drive what a potential business case could look like and therefore the return on investment you know, over the years to repay that investment. Yeah. And are you doing that, you know, post COVID now we're in 2023, are you doing that remotely? Are you doing that in person, hybrid sort of, how's that happening? Yeah. So from an implementation standpoint, it's a hybrid predominantly. So when we do the discovery engagement, which is usually the first engagement we do when we implement a solution like NetSuite or Salesforce, it's to actually understand the requirements and the, and map the business processes out with the relevant user stories for each and every individual's role within the organization. So that's done on site. There's workshops done on site. And then at the end of that, when we collate and, and get sign-offs on each and every design and business requirements, then the implementation is, is also quite hybrid as well. So there's elements that can be done remotely in terms of config, the showcase of the solution and the product showcase that's um, usually done on site. Same as end user training predominantly is done on site. And then especially user acceptance testing when the users actually get the finished product for their particular area. Doing that on site is a lot more advantageous from our experience post COVID because during COVID used to be a lot of ping ponging of you know, issues and spreadsheets and, you know, I got to respond and then you got to respond back after testing it. And then it's like this ping pong exercise that just burns budget and burns time. Yes. So, so doing that on site is probably one of the main reasons why, you know, it's very important that we maintain that contact. Yeah. Great. Great. And, and any particular project management methodology that you guys use? We tend to say we do agile, but it's more wagile, which is a mixture of waterfall and agile because in the ERP world, um, it's not like you can do a product release and go live as an MVP. It's usually one go live at the end of the implementation. So, so even though we implement in a sprints sort of methodology, so we'll start off like a house, you know, it's the record to report the financials, which is the base. Yeah. Get the chart of account structure confirmed, then you move to the items and the and the structure of the items in inventory, and then you kind of move into procurement and sales and planning and all the other processes that feed off the the foundations of of the, of the tech. Yeah, yeah, great. And I know that uh, one of the things when I was doing my research on you was around the fact that you're building, you know, a knowledge base and a, an academy so that it helps your users get up to speed quicker with the implementation. Just tell us a little bit about, you know, how that works and you know, what was the catalyst for you coming up with something like that? So the knowledge base we have and we continue to, to build is based on all the typical questions, all the typical elements that come out of an implementation. Even though NetSuite has a, a learning pass, a company learning pass that the users can go on and, and actually train themselves, that there are the typical questions that come out of an implementation, like how do I do this and how do I do that? And so we, we build a lot of cheat sheets, we build a lot of standard operating procedures, and then we basically incorporate that into the knowledge base that we tend to reuse over and over and translate into the relevant business that we're implementing for, depending on the sector. So we have like a target operating model structure, as well as a standard operating procedure structure for a good practice organization using the templated solution that NetSuite has built for each industry called Suite Success. Right. And if you got to a position where you can then use AI to better mine that database than what you've been doing at the moment? 
I think that's to come. We, you know, I, th I think at the moment, we're just trying to get the base of information, get the structure right. And, and then once we've done that, then we can incorporate the next level of the AI component to hopefully uh, be able to bring those elements to the forefront when someone is doing something and therefore it pops up and say, hey, you need to look at this, you know, knowledge sheet or SOP when you when you're doing something wrong, for instance. Yeah, great. So we've talked about the implementation part. If we go now back to how you've built the client base or what's been the mix of from NetSuite providing your partner, providing your leads versus, you know, self-generated. Yeah, all our leads are self-generated. It's taken a while to get there. As you know, whenever you start an organization, who, who are you? You know, and everyone thinks, oh, we'll just pump uh, ads on Google with Google spend and, you know, leads were just going to flow through the door and it's going to be great. And But at the end of the day, because it's such a huge investment, it's a trust element as well. It's making sure that you build the relevant partnerships and relevant uh, contacts um, that can trust you based on your experience and proving that you can implement a solution and support organizations in the future. Because it is like it is a heart transplant to a business, an ERP system. It touches every part of the business. So, so yeah, getting that lead was it was hard, but building those relationships uh, over time has enabled us to have the the steady flow of leads coming to us as a result of the great implementation success we've had with our clients. Yeah, great. Yeah, so word of mouth referrals is always fantastic. Is there other ways that you've helped generate your own leads? Referrals predominantly as well. So clients speaking highly of us, you know, clients are always talking to others in the industries that they're in, even though they have competitors that they'll talk to as well. They do sometimes talk about, oh, what are you using today? How are you managing this? And so on and so forth. So a lot of that has also come from customers. But yeah, predominantly it's, it's the, the partners that we work with. Yeah, majority of, of the success and, the, you know, leads come from that channel. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, now we spoke prior to coming on air was, you know, around strategic partners and working with specific strategic partners where they already know the business problem. And then obviously they are looking for someone to help solve it. And that's where building relationship with them works. And I think, you know, it's a really smart, smart strategy. And uh, often, you know, people do a lot of direct outreach to end clients on LinkedIn, but I'm always saying you can use LinkedIn to actually find strategic partners that have already got your clients. And um, I think you've done that uh, really well. The next part is around the marketing, right? Because I know you invest in your marketing and I actually was interviewed by one of your marketing people, uh, Lainey, to come on the podcast, right? So just tell me a little bit about that relationship and what they do for you and, and why have you got, whether it's a fully dedicated or semi-dedicated marketing person on the team, which I've got to say, not a lot of cloud consultant SaaS partners have. I think marketing is a very important aspect to getting your name out into the market um you know I'm, we we used to get a fair bit of leads out of linkedin just through sales navigator but i think that's changed a lot since covid i think the level of uh, everybody now on there trying to chase an opportunity and chase leads like even i get bombarded at least 15 times a day from people wanting to sell me their services and, and the rest of it so i think those times of uh, trying to sell via linkedin uh, have gone from my experience i think it's a matter of providing value and providing information out there that anybody can use, whether it's video content or it's blogs and information that people can learn what you've done, how they can apply that into their organization, you know, from an implementation standpoint or from a solution standpoint. So that's the marketing we tend to push is more from a value perspective and also from a you know, knowledge based perspective to the market. Yeah, yeah. And, and what are some of the best platforms to put that content on? Like where are you getting the most success with the content you're creating? So predominantly on the website. So SEO is still very important, uh, making sure that you're ranking well for key terms and, and metadata. Not much on Google Ads as, as what we used to in the past. We do get a fair bit of clicks, but nothing really translates. But it is through, like I said, referrals, customers talking to other customers, organizations talking to other organizations, partners thinking of you because you've helped them out as well in getting them potential business. So it's, you know, love love relationship between partners and us to to share the success so it is building those relationships in the core industries that you're you're wanting to be a part of and then building a user group right so we have a user group called the one cloud x netsuite user group that we host an event each month and on average we have around 30 or 40 people come to it each month so it is building a community around the, the netsuite solution and our customers yeah look that's great and i think you know communities you know i've we're running our community with the Cloud Consultants Collective, which is, you know, peers in it. I think, you know, having that community aspect 
I think is going to become just a part and parcel. So you've got in that early, some of my clients, you know, I'm helping them create that, but I think it's really good to have that community because then that, like you said, you're giving value, but then that becomes, you know, six degrees of separation. You know, you don't know who they know, right? But if you're oiling the wheel, well, then uh, you've got a good chance of getting And I'll just go back to the LinkedIn outreach. I don't think it's run its race. I think there's still opportunity there, but I think you've just got to be smarter in the way you're doing it. So, you know, we've had really good success in doing that for some of our partners, but you got to do it differently to everyone else. And you can't just, you know, like the 15 you get are probably 15 mm-hmm. that you automatically delete, right? And it's actually doing it. And I think it's more in the funnel. So to your point, you got the content. So yeah. people will automatically go to your profile, they go to your content, and then they'll assess whether they're going to accept that connection or follow you up, right? And if you are just doing outreach on standalone yeah. without the content like you guys are doing with Laney's help, I think you're struggling. You're, you're, mm. you're paddling up the proverbial, as, as we all know. So that's great. And, and as far as any events or anything that you either host or you uh, attend incremental to the community that you've got? Yeah, so we do attend events and do have booths at particular events. I think the last one we did was the Australian Manufacturing Industry event in in Sydney. One before that was a CFO Symposium. So we do look at particular events that we can be a part of. But most of the events that we do manage, uh, you know, the user group events, trying to bring people together that are in the NetSuite space. We did try to also bring, you know, a consultant team structure as well, like NetSuite consultants across Australia together in events as well. So people can interact that are in the consulting space. But that didn't seem to work well because I know when I was at KPMG, it used to be a pretty well-run Dynamics user group, um, nice. not users, but more consultants and every consultant across each and every partner, including, you know, Microsoft themselves had a very tight community. And I also, I wanted to, you know, build that in Australia, but uh, still trying, but I haven't been successful to date. Yeah, well, look, I suppose uh, it's hard to do both at once. So you're focusing on the user group at the moment and then there'll be an opportunity gone. And uh, if you are a NetSuite partner in Australia and, uh, you know, like I said, Robert's trying, but we've also got a community where we've got an agnostic uh, opportunity for you as well as part of the Cloud Consultants Collective, which is, you know, my way of, of, of doing that as well. It's been fascinating uh, learning about the business, but what we're going to do now is go into rapid fire. I'm going to ask you four questions yep. and get rapid fire responses. You ready for that? Go for it. All right. So the first one is for you, what are some of the daily habits that you do to help you scale your business? You have to have a routine. If you don't have a routine and that consistent routine, so for instance, waking up the same time of day, doing what you need to do to get ready, whether it's, you know, taking care of the kids or meditating or going to the gym or, or doing whatever you need to do in order to build some gratitude in your life, to build some planning in your life for the day, and then ticking those off at night to, to, to claim, to see that you've done it. To me, that's probably one of the most important aspects. Yeah, great. And the, and the next one is where do you go to find out more about scaling one cloud X? Talking to people, talking to different partners out there uh, as to what people are doing, what organizations are doing, how the market's changing um, in relation to the current uh, economic climate. Um, Yeah, so it's it's talking to different industry heads, talking to different partners in the network who deal with others in your space. Yeah, great. And the next one is, you know, if we could grant you one wish, you know, what would that be for the business? Resources. It's very hard to find good resources um, in the last few years. I'm not sure what's happened, um, especially in the NetSuite space in Australia. So, so having great resources with years of experience who still love to do what they do in the ERP space and not be burnt out or be, uh, you know, what's the word, uh, tainted. Yes, yes. Is, uh, is, is yeah. That's, and, that's and just quickly, you know, because someone could be listening or watching this right now and thinking, I've got to tap on Robert's shoulder is it you know is you know what part of resources is it developers is it PAs is it project people all of above very good question um it's it's solution principles so people who are able to manage the implementation and the solution of NetSuite and be the face of the implementation you know be the trusted advisor so it's the advisory role of somebody who knows NetSuite in the implementation Yeah, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. And, and, you know, no matter how hard, I don't think AI, chat, GDP or whatever version of it is going to replace that in the short term, right? So, uh, yeah, very very uh, valuable skills. Uh, The last one is, you know, what do you know now, i.e. four years in, that you wish you had known better about scaling OneCloudX? 
fear, managing your inner fear. Uh, fear is the root of whether or not you're going to be successful or, or not, I believe. And, uh, and I've been a very fearful person up until I started. I didn't have the, uh, the not the, I wouldn't say the initiative, but it was more the ability to overcome my fear to start this business. So, so, so trying to work over, through your fear and, and, have, and believe in yourself to say that you can do something and just keep pushing yourself to the next step is for sure something I've learned and continue to learn every day. Yeah, brilliant. Well, look, we've been listening to Robert from One Cloud X. It's uh, episode 496. And uh, in the outro, I'll, I'll give you uh, more details, but there's uh, the links, everything that you need on the, the show notes. But Robert, thanks for being a, an Aussie, a fellow Aussie coming on board and also, you know, a NetSuite partner. Like I said, we want to extend our, our reach into the NetSuite space and uh, you're doing a fantastic job. Well done on what you're doing. And thanks for coming on and sharing that and uh, the Cloud Consultant Show today. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate the invitation. All right, brilliant. Thanks, Robert. Thank you. So that was a great interview with Robert. So the value that you've got, please share it on LinkedIn. Uh, He would love you uh, for that. And also share it with your peers or colleagues, right? They'll think you're a rock star for doing it. Check out our solo shows. Also, if you want to know the blueprint to scaling a cloud consulting business, just go to paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash blueprint to get your free copy today. And please take action now to make your ambitions come to reality. Learning is just one piece of the puzzle. It is now time for action. Head to today's show page at paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash podcast. Get the links and put it into action. Head to your favorite podcast platform, subscribe, rate, and review the show. Suggest topics for me to cover at paul at paulhigginsmentoring.com. And don't wait one more minute to gain access to content, especially for you, a cloud consultant, at paulhigginsmentoring.com forward slash newsletter. This could be the difference between wasting time figuring it out yourself or scaling quickly with less effort to enjoy life.